exactly are you looking for? I think I would do a better job of auditioning if I knew exactly what it was you were after, you know? Cause I can do anything. I mean, not anything, but pretty close. Like if you wanted flirty and funny, ha 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 ha. I can do that. Or if you wanted me to be like all mean and everything, I can do that too. Or if it's like a really sad role, I cry just about every day. Not for any real reason, just for practice. I practice crying in case it comes in handy sometime. You never know when you might need to cry. I stand in front of my mirror at home and I try to imagine my mom dying. That usually doesn't work. But then I think about all those starving kids in Africa and that doesn't make me cry either. But then I think about puppies and they make me cry. Not like hurting puppies or anything, just puppies. I hate puppies. They're always looking at you like, look at me, I'm so cute. Well, you're not cute. You're just a baby dog. That doesn't automatically make you cute. And personally, I think puppies are sellouts. I mean, just try and turn on the TV and not see a puppy selling something. So I think about puppies and then I cry. I can also burp on command. <sighs> she asked me to watch her puppy. Ask her. I said, sure. I mean, how bad could it be to watch a harmless, innocent, cute little puppy? Right? Right? Wrong. It was a nightmare if there ever was one. Look at me. Do you see the bags under my eyes? I look like I went 12 rounds with Muhammad Ali. I look horrible. She said to me, like it was no big deal. She said, hey Zara, would you mind watching my puppy for three days? And I go, sure, no problem, no problem. This dog has not stopped barking. His tiny squeaky little voice, ah, 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 did not stop barking the entire night. Ah, 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 like a wolf howling in the night, kept me up. I was tossing and turning, tossing and turning some more. I felt like a 1980s break dancer. <sighs> Finally, it was time to go to work. I was actually excited to go to work for once in my life. Work was somehow a better option than staying at home or oh, oh, oh. But guess what? When I stepped foot into my kitchen, I found myself sliding all the way across the floor and flat down on my back. I have bruises the size of boulders. Dog things. Uh huh. <sighs> this is messed up. The dog's messed up. Cheryl is so messed up for suckering me into watching her little, her, her, her. Oh, I can't even think of any more insults for that, that, that. Ah, I, I've had it. He tore up my couch when I got home from work. My couch, the one that I recently bought from Levitt's, great deal by the way, it's destroyed. But where was Oscar, you may ask? Oscar, the expert trapeze artist, somehow positioned himself on top of my kitchen cabinets. Did I mention how small this dog is? The size of my foot. Don't know how the hell he got up to the top of my cabinets. Miracles of God. Anyway, he couldn't get down. The genius was too afraid to jump. Rightfully so, I'll give him that. But mind you, there was a whole spread of poop and pee on the top of my cabinets, enough to go around. So I'm gonna shut up now before I find myself passed out in the hospital from dog anxiety. <laughs> Like most families, mine has a deep dark secret. And since I'm spilling all this dirt out anyways, I might as well go ahead and say it. Okay, here it goes. My dad's name is Dill, and my mom's name is Rosemary. They're so amused by this, they decided to name all their kids after edible items. My brother's name's Kale, 
and my sister's name is Ginger. The pedographs are a veritable pantry. I know it's weird, but at least they didn't give me some stupid hipster name like Bronx or Jezebel or Roman. I swear if you yell Roman in the playground these days, 10 little rug rats look at their unimaginative parents reading Us Weekly. I look over, and standing over by the hoof section is my father, fuming. I um, haven't called home since that afternoon, and it's 2 a.m., and I'm 14. So I was grounded, and Fred was free to return to play the butler and carry a tray of champagne across stage, which is really just ginger ale, but on stage, ginger ale is champagne. And school let out, had a birthday, turned 15, thanks for the card. That never came. <laughs> and thus began the best summer of my life. Prometheus was the center. I rehearsed from 7 to 11 every night and then worked at the theater. Paint, sew, stitch, uh, stitch Moodlin, uh, Dutchman the Flats, Google it, leader, you'll be surprised. And make midnight runs all the time, getting to know these fascinating creatures, which are the exact opposite of anything suburban I've ever seen. I'd be home at 2 and wake up at 11. And then as if God himself created the syllabus, every day at noon, Channel 48 showed another midday musical. The MGM and Warner Bros. catalog of movie musicals for me. And then a trip to the Wild Missing Library. I took out all the plays I could. Williams, Noel Coward, uh, Oscar Wilde, Kathman and Hart. Uh, George Kathman was actually my gateway drug to the harder stuff. The Algonquin Wits. I think it's safe to say my life would have turned out differently if I played sports as a child. Please, Miss Duarte, don't cast me as the kid. I always play the kid, but I can play anything. Just watch. I could be a mom. Hey, honey, how was school? I baked you some cookies. I'll be out of the oven in just a few. Or, you know, a real mom. Hey, hon, jump in. Oh, bus is leaving. I think we might have lost your brother. Or a dog. I love to play dogs. Here we go. Yip, 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 yip. Where's my ball? Someone play catch. I love to play catch. Or a villain. Give me the money and give it to me now. No questions and nobody gets hurt. You see, I have a wide range. It's just, I'm always the littlest in everything. Nobody ever gives me a chance. Please, just let me try. I don't know what it is with me lately, but I just get so ugh when guys come up to me with their cheesy lines. Hey, you have such a beautiful smile. Or can I just tell you that you are so beautiful? Ugh, it disgusts me. I mean, who the heck does this guy or that guy think he is to give me such compliments? What gives him the right? I don't do anything to give up any kind of interest whatsoever. I completely look the other way when I see eye contact happening and they still come over thinking they're so suave and it's simply repulsive. You know what I'm saying? What does a girl have to do these days? Maybe if I just vomited on myself, the guy would walk the other way, but I bet even then I'd get the way you vomit on yourself is just so, so delightful. All I want is to be left alone. I have a man, I love my man, and I do my best to be polite. But the irritation and the cheesy lines are getting to be too much. Guys are blind. They really are oblivious to when a girl is not interested. There are days when I'd rather be a man.
they bought it. Incredible. One of the worst performances of my career, and they never doubted it for a second. How could I possibly be expected to handle school on a day like this? This is my ninth sick day this semester, and it's getting pretty tough coming up with new illnesses. So if I go for 10, I'm probably going to have to um, barf up a lung or something. So I'd better make this one count. The key to faking out the parents is the clammy hands. It's a good, non-specific symptom. I'm a firm believer in it. A lot of people will tell you that a good fever is a deadlock, but uh, you get a nervous mother, you could wind up in the hospital. That's worse than school. You fake a stomach cramp. You bent over, moaning and wailing. You lick your palms. I know, it sounds a little childish and stupid, but then again, so is high school. Life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. I do have a test today. That wasn't BS. It's on European socialism. But I mean, really, what's the point? I'm not European. I don't plan on being European. So who gives a crap if they're socialists? They could be fascist anarchists for all I care, and it wouldn't change the fact that I don't own a car. It's not that I condone fascism. Or any ism, really. A person shouldn't believe in an ism, they should believe in themselves. I quote John Lennon. I don't believe in Beatles. I just believe in me. A good point there. After all, he was the walrus. I could be with the walrus, and I still have to bum rides off of people. Replace your first burger free because you said it doesn't taste right. And your second burger because it wasn't cooked enough. Now you tell me if this burger is burnt? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. Who do you think you are? This is McDonald's. We serve no sterling steak. Oh, okay, okay, just listen. Why don't you take my greasy apron and my stupid ugly hat and stand back here at 120 degree temperature and cook your own burger until you're satisfied? I know. Don't forget to smile nice for the customers while you're sweating like a pig and listening to the french fry guys whispering poor jokes. No? Doesn't it sound like a good old time to you? Then I suggest you to take this burger and eat it and think about how lucky you are that I'm not smashing an apple pie right on your face. Have I made myself clear? Thank you. Have a nice day! I am going to be the greatest artist Missouri has ever produced. No, the entire Midwest. There have been very famous people. World famous people. Tennessee Williams grew up in Missouri. He grew up not three blocks from where I live now. All of his formative years. And Mark Twain. And Dreiser. And Vincent Price. And Harry Truman. And Betty Grable. But me. Oh, God. Me, 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 me. I am going to be so great, unqualified, the single greatest artist Missouri has ever known. I will be one of the arts. A painter? No. Or a sculptor? No. A dancer? No. No. A writer? Or a composer? A conductor? An actress? One of the arts. People will die. Certain people will literally have cardiac arrest at the magnitude of my achievement. Doing something astonishing, just astonishing. I will have you know I intend to study for 10 years and then burst forth onto the world. And people will be abashed, amazed, astonished at the magnificence. Oh God, look, is that she? Is that she? Is it? Oh my God, it is she. It is she. Oh my God. She died of cardiac arrest and astonishment at the magnificence of my achievement in my chosen field. Only Shakespeare, Michelangelo, Beethoven, and Frank Lloyd Wright have raised to my heights before me. A C? A C? I got a C on my coat hanger sculpture? How could anyone get a C on coat hanger sculpture? May I ask a question? Was I judged on the piece of sculpture itself? If so, is it not true that time alone can judge a work of art? Or was I judged on my talent? If so, is it fair that I'd be judged on a, on a part of my life which I had no control? If I was judged on my effort, then I was judged unfairly for I tried as hard as I could. 
Am I being judged on what I had learned about this project? Then were not you, my teacher, also being judged on your ability to transmit your knowledge to me? Are you willing to share my seed? Perhaps I was being judged on the quality of coat hanger itself out of which my creation was made. Now is this not also unfair? Am I to be judged by the quality of coat hangers that are not used by the dry cleaning establishment that returns our garments? Is this not the responsibility of my parents? Should they not share my C? Thank you, Ms. Sophomore. Squeaky wheel gets the grease. I've been trying to apply for two jobs every day for the past four months now. But you know, they, they want experience all the jobs. I don't have experience. I mean, I went to college. I always thought that was experience, but it's not, apparently. Everywhere I go, they're like, well, can you use Excel? Can you use PowerPoint? And it gets to the point where I can't even get a job at Bed Bath & Beyond. Like, literally, I was getting a job at the Bed Bath & Beyond near Union Square. I had an interview, thought it went really well, but they never called me back because I didn't have enough experience. Even, even though I have a lot of experience in like, sales and selling things. Well, you know, I worked at the art gallery for over three and a half months until it shut down because the owner was an addict, but they said that selling art was different. It was a different skill set than home goods and they were worried I would have a hard time adjusting in terms of skill set. And I was like, that's not true. And they're like, well, we think it is true. And I was like, well, I have a lot of skills that could be very valuable to you. And they're like, what skills? And I was like, my personality. I have an amazing personality. I'm personable. I can talk to people from all walks of life. I'm smart. I went to a good college. And if you teach me how to sell home goods, I promise I can do it. And they were like, well, we disagree. And I was like, well, you're wrong. And they were like, well, we think you're wrong. We're the ones get to decide. So yeah, don't call us. We'll call you.